Right, evening everybody. It's um, Tuesday the 18th of October. Um, I apologise in advance for my dishwasher that's clogging away down there. And um, I know I did two yesterday, but I'm going to do two tonight to get myself ahead of the game again. Because I've, with all the baby malarkey last week, I've kind of got myself in a bit of a rush over the last couple of days. So time to take stock and catch up and get myself ahead so that I can um, maybe have a night off and not think, oh God, I've got to review and upload and all this lot. So, um, another couple of Japanese, and these two could be interesting, unusual, different, shall we say. Um, so the first one is this particular one, which um, is a Maker's Mark miniature bottle um, that I washed out and took a sample of uh, Toguchi um, from the um, lovely people at the Whiskey Lounge in York, um, Joe Clark. Thank you very much. But I must give a special mention to Eddie Ludlow, the founder of the Whiskey Lounge, who, when I started working for Oddbins back in my university days up in Newcastle, he was a work colleague of mine. I think he was assistant manager at the time. And um, we crossed paths again when I went down to run the whiskey shop in York, which is what got me to where I am now. Um, and he was the manager of the York store. He might have left at that point, but he was at one point manager of the York store as well already seriously into his whiskies. It's entirely possible that the very first whiskey tasting I ever did was with him. Um, and Monday, two days ago, he actually became a keep, keeper of the quake, um, which is a fantastic achievement. And um, if you don't know what keeper of the quake is, it's a, um, it's basically like a, a title, it's kind of an unofficial title, a bit like you know an unofficial OBE or something like that. Um, that is um, given to people within the whiskey industry um, who have um, essentially kind of done great work for the industry as a whole to increase awareness, whether it's kind of, you know, through their work in distilleries or publicity or marketing or writing or anything like that over a number of years. Um, so it's very well deserved for Eddie. He's done fantastic work at the Whiskey Lounge and um, yeah, I'm really chuffed for him. I think it's an absolutely fantastic achievement. So I pinched some of this off him um, and it is a, well, this is what's known as, or what I've read as, they're not even marketing it as this, although they might be, a naturalized Japanese whiskey. So it's by a company called um, Chugoku Jozu, which um, is a company near Hiroshima, which is here, um, who since 1918 um, have been making fruit liqueurs and sake and another um, very specific Japanese, um, I think it's a spirit called um, Shochu. And um, they kind of went into experimenting with whiskey and um, production, but they're not distilling it. Um, now, um, Togochi, to, to, Toguchi, Toguchi was launched in 1990 and um, has been available since then in some form or another. Now, there is a non-age statement, there is an eight-year-old. This is a 12-year-old and looks like this. Um, it's sort of like a black ceramic bottle. It was quite funky. You're looking at um, the whiskey exchange is selling this for 62 quid. Um, but it's not distilled in Japan. It's actually it's a blended whiskey, but it is a blend of malt whiskey from Scotland and grain whiskey from Canada, as you do. So I don't know what distilleries the malt whiskey is from in Scotland. Um, I don't know where the grain whiskey is coming from, apart from it's Canada. But what they're doing is they're taking those spirits in. Now I don't know, because I couldn't find out, whether they are whether there is any aging or whether it is literally it's distilled, it's stored in a tank and they send it over to Japan, or whether it has had some aging in cask at some point. But those two, those types, the, the, the malt and the grain whiskey is then blended together and transferred into casks to then age in Japan. And one of the reports I'd read about it, which seemed to have been written in Japan almost in a semi-official sense, was basically saying that because they arrive at a port and um, uh, Chigoku Jozu basically sign the paperwork and the customs dockets, all of a sudden it becomes Japanese spirit. No, but if that's what the, what, the way you want to run this, then okay, we'll go with it. They actually store them in, um, it's in a town called um, Taguchi, um, hence the name of, of the whiskey. 
but they don't store it in a warehouse. It's actually a disused railway tunnel. Um, it was a tunnel that was um, built, I think, back in 1932, um, that was to extend a major railway line, but it never actually got completed and it was never finished. So it went back to the town, it's now owned by the town, and Chigoku, Chigoku Jozu, um, I think they rent it, I don't think they even own it, they actually use this railway tunnel where apparently the temperature is always 15 degrees, it's constant all the way, and then they also partly mature it in their um, headquarters, which I'd forgotten where it is, and I'd forgotten to find out where it is, so I can't even put it up on map. So they're maturing it in both sherry and brandy casks as well. So sherry casks, okay, that's fine, but brandy casks is unusual for whiskey maturation. So, yes, I have no idea what this is going to be like. The 12 year old is apparently peated. There is also an 18 year old which is unpeated. Um, but there is a peated influence in this. So, presumably, that's coming from the malt whiskies that they're getting from Scotland. But what that peated level is, I've absolutely no idea. Now, you can probably tell by my voice, head cold is still not quite gone yet. And it is, I'm sure it's affecting my ability to really properly get 100% out of these, these drams that I'm doing at this current um, moment in time. But I need to play on through, I need to get on with this challenge. So I can't really give up just because I've got a bit of a sniffle. So I will give it a go. I've got enough, having done the two last night and being able to get quite a lot out of it, I've got enough freedom in my head and nose to be able to at least pick up a fair chunk of it. Although by the sounds of the next whiskey I'll be doing, I might not even want that, but we'll get to that in a bit. So, okay, there is a peatiness to it, but it's a slightly musty peatiness. It's a really weird nose, this. Okay, I get the grain. I, I am picking up the graininess. And the, the smoke, the smoke that's there is quite sweet, but it's slightly cigarette smoke as well. Not being a smoker, not being a vapor, not being any, somebody that's ever touched a, one of these vaping things. But I can almost imagine it's, it's like an artificial cigarette smoke, smokiness. But there's a weird mustiness underneath as well. That's not quite vegetal, but it's sort of like bins. But it's it's not quite horrible. It's just just about kind of this is interesting and weird, but it's not horrible. But if it was a little bit sicklier, or if it was a little bit sweeter, or a little bit of this weird smokiness, it would be an unpleasant nose. It's a bit like sniffing an ashtray that's had some, so it's ashtray with cigarette butts in that's had um, something like brandy kind of spilt into it. That's weird. That's a really unusual nose. And I think it's the combination of a brandy cask, part maturation in that, and then peated whiskey, but an unusual weird pe peatiness as well. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, it doesn't taste like an ashtray, fortunately. There is smokiness there. It's quite soft, but it's more, it's more cigarette smoke. It's not bonfire, it's, not, it's nowhere near medicinal or anything like that. This is a kind of cigarette ashiness to it. And as somebody that doesn't smoke, it's, it's not brilliant, to be honest. Um, there's a sweetness in there. It, it kind of, it starts off spicy, but then disappears and goes really flabby in the middle. And there's a fruitiness in there that's almost melon, but melon and cigarette ash don't, are not a combination that you would really choose to put together. Like I say, tip of the tongue starts off quite, there's a nice bit of spice to it flabby in the middle, then when you swallow, it kind of explodes with this smokiness, but again, it's, it's ashy, slightly bitter, not acrid, 
but there's a slight bitterness to it as well. Not quite acetone, but nearly there as well. I can't say this is a particularly pleasant whiskey for me. It's distinctive, I'll give it that. It's very unusual, but I wouldn't say it's enjoyable. It's unbalanced, it's just a weird combination of flavors. So there is a sweetness to it, which is arguably sherry casks, but there is this flabbiness in the middle of the palate. This fruitiness comes through, but it's quite a light, not quite tropical, but it's like me melon, but it's um, kind of Galia cantaloupe melon, that sort of slightly watery, not particularly powerful melon flavor. And then this cigarette ash feel to it. It's, it's a really, really odd, unbalanced combination of stuff that doesn't really go together, but I don't think you'd really prefer in individual parts anyway. not a great whiskey. It's definite acetone that's coming through now as well. It's real kind of like nail polish remover on the finish. That's not good. That's not great. That's not, that's not good. That's not great. That's not a great whiskey at all. It's a very, very unusual whiskey. There might be some people out there that like it because it is quite wacky. It is, there is, there is all sorts of things popping around and, and it is a bit like, what the hell's going on with this? And it will probably float some boats. And if you can find a sample of it, because I certainly wouldn't pay 62 quid for it. I wouldn't pay, no, I wouldn't pay half that. But if you can find a sample of it, or if you can find it at a bar where it's not a ridiculous price and you actually want to try something really weird, then give that a go. You might like it, you really might. It's just, it's too disparate and it's, it, it's, not, it's not slotting together nicely, but it's not even flavors that I would particularly want to spend some time with anyway. What a weird whiskey. And apparently the one I'm gonna have next is even weirder than that. Right, okay, well I'm gonna have a quick rinse out and then we should crack on with the next one. So, to Gucci, you're weird. You're a weird, weird whiskey. And I sort of like you for that, but I don't really want to come back to you, I'm afraid. Sorry. Right. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.